He is uh, the lead faculty at Tekadere Institute. Now, he also is very interesting. He also invented and painted in the robotic system, which the United States government acquired and he writes. Now, he holds two doctoral and four master's degree, including a PhD in engineering from Johns Hopkins University. He earned an undergraduate degree from Owerri, uh, where he graduated as best of his class. And um, while he was now, also he is a recipient of the IGI Global Book of the Year Award, a TED Fellow, an IBM Global Entrepreneur, and World Economic Forum Young Global Leader. Now, Professor Ekekwe has held professorships in Carnegie Mellon University and also and has served in the United States National Science Foundation Committee. So, Professor Ekekwe, good morning, or rather yeah. good afternoon, and you're welcome, sir. We're ready yeah. for you, sir. Yeah, good morning, and my sincere apologies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for my inability to connect that when it was originally scheduled. I think you had a scheduling issue there. I'm so excited to be here with you to have a conversation on remote work. I just want to confirm that my slide is visible, and if you can, please, sir, I can get started. Not yet, sir. Oh, okay. I actually studied up. It's strange. Uh, X. Let me see. I'm so sorry. Share screen. Please, please confirm you can see it now. Not yet, sir. It should be there, right? You can't see it? Not yet. It's not here. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, but it's... Um... Okay, yes. We, we can see it now. Okay, okay, beautiful. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you so much, and I, I will be having a conversation as part of that broad team of freelancers within the e-remote ecosystem. And my conversation titled "Accumulation of Capabilities and Extending Frontiers Through Remote Work." And to begin that, I will just share here that we have an amazing world, and in this amazing world. We have, we have many frictions, and frictions, of course, are the challenges that people, organizations, and nations face every day. These are problems in so many dimensions that we have in life. The frictions of hunger, the frictions of lack of clean water, the frictions of inadequacy in electricity. There are just so many components of those frictions. And it turns out that across human history, one of the most fundamental ways of fixing this friction is actually going through market system. And going through the market system has to do with looking at emission of farms. In other words, why do we have companies and why do we establish companies? And if we do have companies, what are those companies designed to do? We know that in any market system, there is a high level of inefficiency. And that high level of inefficiency has to do with the fact that market has a lot of asymmetric problems. They say what they call information asymmetry. In other words, there is something the demand knows that the, the supply does not know. And that is also something that the supply knows that the demand does not know. And one way of overcoming that friction or that perturbation or that information asymmetry is to establish companies. Companies now help us to overcome those information asymmetry making it possible that transaction can take place. And when transaction can take place, it means that markets can now operate more optimally. And I'll just give a very simple example. I like to do that a lot. You are there in Lagos, and you, you, there is, assume there is no restaurant in the city of Lagos. 
And because there is no restaurant in the city of Lagos, the only option for you to eat if you're hungry is to knock at people's doors. When you knock at the door one, knock at door two, you ask them, do you have food to serve? And they say they don't have food. Another door say, I don't have food. And there is a possibility that after you have knocked for the first 20 doors, houses, they may not have food to sell. But at the same time, there is a family that has food, but you cannot just knock on their door. So the person is expecting you to knock. You can just knock. And the person has food to sell. The person cannot make sale. Yet at the same time, you are very hungry. What has happened here is that there is a massive information asymmetry. You have information the supplier does not have. And if supplier has information, you do not have. So how do we overcome that level of perturbation in market system? It happens by setting up businesses. It happens by people saying, I want to offer services. And that could mean open up a restaurant business. And when you now open up that restaurant business, instead of that person knocking at people's door, he now goes to a restaurant. And the restaurant now, a company offers a service. And that service is cooking good food, and you pay for, for that food. So that is how markets are structured. And that is basically the mission of farms. Even for us, whether we do this thing remotely or we do that on site, it's the same thing. For people to offer those services like banking, restaurant services, you need to have what we call capabilities. Capabilities are the things which are now needed for you to create production services which those companies have to offer. So you need capabilities in management, you need capabilities in technical area, you need capabilities in organization, market systems. There are just so many dimensions of these capabilities. As we move into a world that is extremely distributed, we will live in a world that people who have capabilities are actually those that will rule the empires of the future. And within those capabilities, we can now see elements, the elements of knowledge. We need to have knowledge. It's also the elements of labor. And all these things are now encapsulated in people, processes, and tools. Capabilities are key. In the remote work, we talk about technical. Some people are very good in software. Some are very good in so many dimensions, electrical engineers. And I also have people that offer services in administration, management. The more capabilities you acquire, the better things begin to better. So if you look at this plot here, you see that as you move from left to right, you have more influence. You have more extra value. Because the capabilities correlate with more extra value, with more influence. So what I'm trying to say here, if we want to find a lot of value in the remote work ecosystem, we need to accumulate capabilities. We need to accumulate capabilities because only when we have capabilities that the impacts we are actually exerting in the market will compound. There are some that will still just be playing here, helping people do data entry as part of their remote work. But there are also people that will be moving into the next frontiers that are going to drive the ordinance of the market system. People that have skill set in AI, have skills in the machine learning, have skill set in the new technologies of the future. Accumulating, acquiring, applying, deepening new capabilities were very, very critical in whatever that we want to do. So I showed this plot here. And what we are expecting is that the world is constantly going to keep getting better within what I call the innovation society. If you look right here, you can see we don't have a lot of innovation here. The GDPs of the world, the gross world products, were just flat for generations. For many people that live right just before the last 500 years, the GDPs of China, GDP of the United States, uh, the gross world product, aggregate of all the GDPs in the world, it did not have any significant improvement over time. So people that lived here were poor, compared to people who are poorer before computer lived here. Because the population was increasing even when the GDP was flat. In other words, the capital income was decelerating as population was increasing in a flattened GDP that was not growing over generations. They lived an invention society. 
and many of them died very poor. But they were also very brilliant people. They gave us fundamental elements of physics and chemistry. But they died of polio, tuberculosis, malaria, because they could not invent vaccines, even though they have the compounds. But now move into the world called innovation society. Now, they don't just have those compounds, but they also have the capacity to create vaccines out of those compounds. In the world that we are still in the reward work, the world is looking for innovators, people that can help organizations innovate, not just becoming inventors. So in other words, we have to see how we acquire capabilities in this space so that right there in Africa, right there in Latin America, right there in Southeast Asia, we can now also distribute our services to Western Europe, North America, and beyond. The beautiful things that are coming in the future are also going to be huge. Because it's the wave one of the innovation society, we have artificial intelligence autonomous system coming. People that acquire skills here, they are going to see a very, very huge emerging future. So I believe that remote is going to be a part of our future. And building, acquiring, deepening capabilities in, in anything that we do is going to be exceedingly very, very critical in whatever we do. And it is going to affect practically every sector of our industrial system. We're going to see the impact in healthcare services. There are so many young people in Lagos that are helping organizations in the United States to manage healthcare data. There are so many of these fintech companies that are stationed in Nairobi and they are serving people all over, over the world. You can also look at ed education. So these things are going to be unbounded, but you can only participate only when you have capabilities. And I want us to go back to see that the impact is huge when you acquire and accumulate more capabilities. You need to move right, because the more capabilities you acquire, the more extra value that you can capture. It's not just about saving and doing remote work. It's about doing remote work at the upstream. I have used a terminology that is very common in Nigeria. We say the downstream sector and the upstream sector in the oil and gas. The downstream, they don't have a lot of value. But the upstream is where you have Konoko Philip, Shell, Ezra Mobile. They capture extraordinary level of value. So we can move here from here. And the more we move here, the more impact we can create at the global arena. So <clears throat> our world is unbounded and unconstrained because it's all about global. You are global and you are local at the same time. And only when we have capabilities that we can now become critical remote elements in connecting into the prosperity of nations, irrespective of the geography that we are living. And I want to challenge us, let's go and acquire those capabilities so that we can advance the wealth of nations and also advance the prosperity of all countries. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Just made this very short because I know that the time is fast. Thank you.